Hi everyone, welcome to the Rose Hip Island Video Diary. This is the February video for 2022. My name is Hannah and I am recording my videos from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I am a Swedish expat and I live here with my husband, our two daughters, one cat, 10 chickens and a few fish. My videos are mostly about knitting and also a little bit of hand dyeing, some spinning, and occasionally a little bit of sewing. So basically making and crafting and uh, keeping my hands busy. Thank you so much for joining me. I am as most of the time sitting in my studio surrounded by my yarn fabric, sewing machine, yarn winder, spinning wheel, all the good things and things that keep me inspired and make it possible for me to be creative and make. I have with me a few things that I'd like to share with you today. So in the video today, I will talk about what I'm working on with my knitting and my current spinning project. And I have been doing a little bit of sewing. First, a just very brief update on what's been going on here in, um, well, in my life since January when I last recorded the video. I have basically just been doing my nine to five job Monday to Friday. I have made the most of my evenings and my weekends. Summer has been going strong and we have been doing day trips to different beaches and we have enjoyed swimming and barbecuing and doing all of those good summer things. And I have also um, try to really make the most of the time that I can set aside for my making and crafting. And I have, I think, focused quite a bit more on just um, my personal making and not things for my shop. So I should mention that you can find me as Rosip Island on Instagram and on Ravelry. And I have a web shop and a website, rosipisland.com, where I sell my hand dyed yarn. And yes, you might have noticed that I didn't say that I would talk about hand dyed yarn today. And no, I've um, the only thing I've been doing with dyeing is the clubs that I have going currently, my tea and yarn subscription club. So that's what I have been spending my non-personal crafting time on but um, the rest of my crafting time has been on all personal fun things so it's been really enjoyable especially since work has been quite full on so I'm just going to get into it now and share with you things that I have been making and creating I have a couple of knitting projects that I have finished since last time. I think one of them I had started and I'll, I'll start with showing you that one. I made a kid size like candy cow, a pattern by Stephanie Lotton. And I have made a few of Stephanie's cows before that have these this sort of construction where you start making a triangle and then you you join it around and you make it this sort of I'm not sure what it's called bandana style um triangular shaped cow so I made a a child size for intended for my eight-year-old and I think it would be a good fit and my eight-year-old she really loves rainbow so in my overflowing stash of mini skeins and small leftover skeins I found um, a few colors that I thought would work nice in I mean it's not a rainbow but you know it has that sort of um, feeling to it and then I went into different pinks and reds for the hearts down here and I had followed 
another project on Ravelry that had made this child size and they explained in their Ravelry project notes how many stripes they had done of the different colours and I thought I had followed it but still when I got to the last stripes I only got two stripes in of that pink that I had used here and then I thought oh, okay just make the first row of hearts in that same colour and make it sort of flow together somehow and it's really yeah really nice it's been way too hot to wear anything like this so it's just been sitting there waiting for me to show it to you and then it will um be put aside for a bit until it gets colder i'm hoping it will be a really useful um item for my daughter i know that i really like mine that i have and so i'm used to mini skeins from my stash and all of them are hand dyed by me so some of them are from i think there's some advent mini skeins in here there might be some club mini skeins and some other just mini skein set minis that i have used and the gray main color is my silver colorway in a skein that i had left of my dandy sock yarn which i no longer die on so yeah that i think i'm i'm very 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 happy with it and um it was such a quick knit and yeah just fun to do something colorful and quick um for you know a few days so yeah and um i think i have said this before um many times probably but i do really recommend stephanie's uh, patterns they're great so that's that one like candy by stephanie lotvin and i think she's telebean knits on instagram that's that one the second thing i have finished lately are my slipper socks and i believe i share these with you in my last video i don't think i had finished them because I had put them aside to not use them until I have shown them to you <laughs> all finished. So um, I believe they were mostly done last time, but not quite. So these are the Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks, a pattern by Cozy Up Knits. And they look like that. They are made in double strands of fingering weight yarn I think the pattern I'm not sure if it says to use two strands of fingering weight or just one strand of DK or worsted weight I have previously made them using a DK weight yarn which was really great and now I try to use two fingering weight yarns and I use leftovers from my stash and I had used both both of these yarns before as just single strands in other sock projects so i got them out of my my sock drawer just to show you just to um see how different they are and i'm sorry these socks are a bit grubby because i've been wearing them this is actually a sock that i made uh, for my daughter so it's a bit of a smaller size so it stretched a bit stretched a bit on my blocker so that's just a vanilla a plain vanilla sock and the yarn is the i think it's called floromania i think it's a regular or is it an opal it's one of the german uh, sock yarn brands and the floromania so i made a pair of those and you can see that's what i've used in in these ones and with these long color repeats it meant that one slipper is more green and one slipper is more yellow and what i held double with this yarn was a hand dyed yarn from natural fiber arts and this sock is really grubby and that yarn looks like this knitted up this is actually a patterned sock and it's got a little bit felted and it's a bit of a, a thicker sock weight and you can see it doesn't have the same stretchiness anymore after being washed in the washing machine a few times so these two together ended up looking like that and I still have leftovers of these two yarns um but I think I feel quite done with them <laughs> at this at this point I'll just show you what these 
super sleek lilac. They are a very quick, quick knit, quick fun knit, and um, I really like the sleepers that I have um, of this design before. So now I'm very happy to be able to um, add these to my uh, sock drawer. So that's the finished things that I have um, in the knitting department. <laughs> well, I think in everything probably. Um, yes, my slipper socks. And when I had finished these, I thought these are just really fun and it's fun to um, dig leftovers out of my stash and combine different colors uh, for a project like this. So I started a a new pair of these and I'll have to get my big bag of projects out I wasn't really prepared here in my small bag that I talked about in my last video I have started a pair of these same slipper socks Joe's perfect slipper socks for my eight-year-old and she has decided on the colors uh, you can see this is the child size and what she wanted was a yellow at the toes, going into a blue, and then into a pink. And what I did to get the right thickness was to add a strand of undyed, and you probably can't see this, but this has the Lurex Silver Sparkle in it. So with that there is a silver sparkle in this sock and um, yes it's not it's not a combination that I would choose um, but I do think it's fun so once I have the the pink going up around the the heel and the ankle I think it will look bit more as a finished um, finished look to it but yes I have one slipper sock and it's just been sitting like this for a long time uh, when I've been distracted by other things I just need to do the short rows and build up the heel and pick up stitches and there's yeah there's not a lot left I'll do that and then I'll, I'll do the second one and I'll have another pair and it's not using a lot of yarn, so <laughs> I could probably make quite a few of those using the same um, yarn combination. But I'm doing my best in using up mini skeins and, and leftovers. So that's um, one of the projects that I am currently working on. Let me have a look at my list that I wrote down. I do have um, three pairs of socks on the go, but I won't um, won't really well. I won't show you the two pairs of vanilla vanilla socks that I'm working on. They're just sort of self striping yarn, and I haven't really been working much on them. The only pair of socks that I have been working a little bit more on are my Hermione's everyday socks that I am making in my new bio sock. I think I showed you this time this last time uh, it's the bio sock has biodegradable nylon in it so this is something that I have available in my in my shop Rosip Island it's the coral colorway in the bio sock so biodegradable nylon and I am working on the second one and the yellow really get blown out on the camera it's not like that in real life it's much more um, the same color. <laughs> it's just the camera just really picks up the, the lighter parts in the colorway. So this is what I've been working on uh, if I've had a short break at work. Yes, Hermione's Everyday Socks in Biosock Coral colorway. But what I have mostly been working on uh, to um, or well, one cardigan project and one jumper project sorry I'll show you the 
the jumper project first because that's something that has been ongoing so that will be quick this is still happening <laughs> this is the um, stripes pattern by andrea maori that i am making without stripes i'm just using the pattern um for the increases and all the stitch counts and everything I did make a stripe one and I have that right here haven't been wearing it yet it's been too hot this is my original stripes and I talked about that in my last video but I'm now making one in um, Debbie Bliss Donegal tweet that I purchased in a D-stash a while ago it is a pink with small tweety bits of blue and a lighter pink very nice so i've just been this is what i've been working on in the car when we have been um driving off to different beaches and things on the weekends uh, it's just you know plain knitting in the round but i am making it on a size two millimeter needle so it is taking time i've been measuring it against my original one and i think i have maybe maybe five centimeters to go and then i'll do the bottom ribbon then i'll do sleeves and then pick up the, the neck band and do that as well um, but it's just a nice project to have on the go because i'm easy knitting um but i feel like i'm being productive when it's actually adding stitches to a jumper not so much like a sock um when i knit on socks i don't feel as productive because the socks are not really something that I want the finished product with as much as with the jumper. Just my weird thinking. But yes, this is still happening, just growing slowly. Um, but then the main project that I've been working on lately is a, a cardigan that um, the Swedish yarn company Yalbu um has a niche long for and the yarn company is yellow and the cardigan is saga saga is the swedish word for fairy tale and uh, it's an all over color work cardigan that's steaked it's a uh, designed by the i think norwegian designer venture Roald, i think her name is and i've always wanted to make one of her patterns and they're very very nice and a lot of amazing color work and i had seen this cardigan that is in the niche long before and i it never really i liked it but i never really thought of it as something that i would make for myself and then when this knit along came along i thought okay well it just will be really nice to knit it along with other people. There's a face group, Facebook group where you can um, see what other people uh, are doing. If they're making modifications, if they're having questions, you can see what the, you know, any answers are and you can get really good help. And it's just nice to see how others uh, are going with their projects. So I, I jumped on that knit along. And I had yarn in my stash. I had some Norwegian um, wool, fingering weight wool. And I did some swatching and I, I made it work. It wasn't uh, perfect according to the pattern, but I made it work. And I started knitting this cardigan. Everything is on the floor today, sorry. <laughs> um. And I don't think I, I, I don't think I have shown this before. Now I'm getting. It's been a while since my last video, so I'm a bit unsure. Anyway, the yarn that I'm using is Hillesvog Sölje. Let's see. Sölje is a Norwegian wool tag 
100 percent wool 350 meters per 100 grams and i had a few of these skeins that my mum had picked up for me I had these colors mum had picked up them up for me in norway when she went to the the mill where they make this yarn and then in a d stash on ravelry i found an australian uh, knitter who was d stashing this darker green i think i got like five skeins of that something like that so you can see it's um a different green so in the the pattern and i'll, I'll put a link to the the pattern below i don't think i'll put a picture in i'll see but saga the cardigan in the pattern it's very high contrast it's a, a lighter color for the all the for the neck bands and all the ribbing and that light color comes through in the color work and then it has a darker main color and then also a a third color in the color work um and i thought about it and i, thought, I don't want to I, I wanted to use this wool and i thought i need a high contrast thing and i found this one as a just a one-off skein that i had from a small swedish pr producer this one do a little spilled and it's a Gotland and Falkland merino so that was similar and I thought oh that will give the high contrast but then I did a, a gauge swatch and everything looking at different color combinations and this is the Gotland wall that I also have in my stash decided that that was not giving the right gauge so I decided on Celia, the green one. Um, I had thought about it and what, what, what did I want? And decided that I was going to go with something that did, was not as high of a contrast because I think I will wear that more. I think the reason why I did not immediately think of making this cardigan for myself when I first saw it was that it's quite long. And it has that all over color work in a high contrast and it's just it's just not something that i wear i really i appreciate it i appreciate the sort of the art behind not the art but you know what i mean i appreciate it i appreciate the work um and how it's beautiful but it's not something that i would wear so i thought about it more and i thought oh maybe i'll, I'll just try doing a less high contrast and not use that lighter color and see how that works out and then just by <laughs> total chance i made a mistake when i started the the neck band and i actually did not use the right color it was meant it's meant to have a different color for the neck band to the main color but i started with my main color as the neck band and basically how I decided what will be the main color and what will be the other colors was totally just based on how much I had available in my stash. So the dark green that I bought in the D stash was what I had most of. So that's my main color. And then I used the lighter green and the purple um, in the color work. And I have been working on this in the evenings and I have finished my body of this cardigan and I'll show you now and then I'll talk more about how I've changed it <laughs> so um this is what I have so this is Saga and the knit along is uh, with Yarbu and Kia's build um Kia she's sort of been hosting the the knit along and I think it's just at the end of the knit along now I'm, I'm I've really have not kept up with the the weekly um, updates or and the the pattern has been free during the knit along so it might still be available free um to download so yes this the neck band was meant to be i think where i have the light green or maybe the purple i'm not sure one of the other contrasting colors were meant to be there uh so i did that and then i thought oh I did a mistake and then I thought I might actually just like it better this way 
I started on two millimeter needles. I had to go down a lot of needle size to get the gauge. Start on two millimeter needles, but then I went up to 2.5 to make the short rows in the back. And I started knitting the color work. And then I realized that I had read the charts incorrectly. So I actually ripped back these two and started over. And I also realized that my gauge was a bit off. So I went down to a two millimeter needle size again for the color work. And what I should have done is I should have used a two millimeter needle size for for the short rows as well because they are now it's a bit loose of this fabric here so it gives a bit of a bumpy look and also even though I did use the two millimeter needle size for the neck band it feels a bit large but what I have discovered is that when I put it on if I get it down over my shoulders right it sits quite nicely still so it's a bit I, I did start to pick up stitches to redo the neckband. Then I changed my mind because I think I want to see what it looks like when it's been steeped and it's sitting on before I know if it's okay or not. But then I don't know if I can do that because I'm now going, after I've made the sleeves, I'm going to pick up the button bands in the front and then you pick up here as well. So I can't really do anything about the neckband after I've done that. So I thought I'll make the sleeves and then I'll have more of a think about it and make a decision about if I need to rip up and redo. So I made, again, to make it more something that I feel is sort of my type of garment, I made it less contrast, which I, I really like these colours. And I have actually used a third, no, fourth colour in here, a lighter purple. You can't really see it, but I do think it gives more of a depth to it. And if I did not do that, you you will probably be able to see a difference. So I'm happy with that. I've just added that lighter one in here. And yeah, so. Um, so I made a lower contrast. I've made the ribbing in the main color, not in contrasting color. And I have also made it quite a bit shorter. I wanted it to be more of a cropped length. Especially with a cardigan, I wear more shorter cardigans. Um, so I think that will be more something I will wear. So I've just done the ribbing for the bottom of the body. And, and I was starting on the sleeves when I decided to wait with the neckband. I started sleeves. And honestly, this is a lot of work, all this colour work knitting. And... I feel quite happy with the work that I've done on the body. I feel like I'm ready to move on. So to not um, abandon this, to move on to something, to my next thing that's exciting. And also to make this an item that I would feel more happy wearing. I have decided to wait to make my sleeves just the main colour plain sleeves and I have seen garments like this but they would have a raglan or something um, so it has a nice divide between the colour work body and the sleeves but I have decided to give it a go to just do the green dark green sleeves and see what it looks like and I decided I can just rip it back and make the colour work if it just looks ridiculous but I have started to make my um, sleeves just the main colour and I'll just do one, get it down a bit and see what it looks like. So my um, saga is quite different to the original, but it's definitely still a, a, a saga. But I would like, yeah, it would be nice if plain sleeves would look okay because I think then... First of all, I would be able to finish it easier and not lose motivation. And also I think it will be more wearable for me if it's a bit toned down. So yes, Saga, that was a long, um, not discussion, a long talk about this cardigan. 
I love the wool. I love this rustic woolly wool. I'm looking forward to wash it and block it and see what that does to it. I still have so much left of this wool and um, I have to find some new project and maybe you know, do the colours in a different way so that it looks like some something completely different. So first of all, I would have to find a, um, a pattern. Anyway, I have probably other things that I want to do first. Saga. So I only just started this sleeve last night, so I'm quite excited about um, getting going on that and see what it looks like. That's that one. Okay, sip of tea. Oops. Okay, that's all the knitting. I have a lot of things in my queue, a lot of things that I want to make, but I'm trying to uh, stay focused and I do have limited time for knitting, so I want to not spread a time over too many things. Last time I had, I have a cat out here now. Um, I've closed the door so I don't get disturbed and it's quite windy, so I want the sound to be okay. Last time I had started a spinning project because I had finished one spinning project and I'm still working on the one that I had started, I think, last time. But I'm almost done with it. I have one plied bobbin. So half of it is plied and, and done. Oh, it looks a bit bad here at the end of it. Um, don't know how easy it is to see so I used a, a pink and a purple from my fiber stash they're just a um, plain color merino had a bit of each I had most of the hot pink so what I did so this is half of it the rest of it is still in single form what I have done is that I have just um, I made four equal parts of both colors and then I filled four bobbins and I just grabbed most sort of longer stretches of the hot pink and then I did a little bit of the purple in between and just randomly um, spun the colors so these two I will ply it together and that's what I've done here so in some areas it's only the hot pink it's a two ply some areas have the purple and the pink, and there are a few areas that have only the, the purple. Um, so I'm going to hopefully ply um, the second half later today, and I will have a, a new hand spun. And that will be all of my pinks and purples that I have been working on, and I'm hoping to put them all together in a project. And I, I think I showed you all of the different skeins in my last video so that's the spinning and i must say that it has been really good for me to have my spinning wheel sort of out and ready at all times so what i have been doing instead of having my camera set up here i put the spinning wheel here so i keep my chair here and and you know somewhere to put my tea and everything and i just have my spinning wheel ready with my chair and i can just come in and sit here and even if i do you know 10 minutes um, every now and then it all adds up and it's really good because my spinning wheel often just sits in a corner and never gets used so I really would like to do more spinning and this uh, way I've been doing it now has been really working it's not sort of taking a big chunk out of my time but it's all those um, 10 minutes they do add up and um, yes um, I'm loving the result so that's really good. And now um, I do have some sewing to share with you. And then I can actually talk about what I'm wearing. This um, is a <laughs> it's a it's a garment that I'm I think I made it last summer. It's just a cotton jersey fabric that I got from the clearance shelf at Spotlight, which is where I get most of my uh, fabric. Not because I don't think it's worth the money to 
buy good more expensive fabric it's more because i'm very much a beginner and i'm too scared to use fabric that i have spent a lot of money on so i often um check the clearance shelf and if i find good stuff there i'll i'll get it and um i don't have that block to be too scared to to use it and cut into it so this is one of those fabrics that i got a bit of and i was making a let's see do i have i put all my stuff out i got i think i don't know if it was last summer or the summer before i got a few patterns like sewing patterns from um op shops and some from my news agents my news agent i don't know if this is something many news agents do but it's my local news agent when they send magazines back and if they have those sort of freebies in them they take those things out before they send the magazines back that they have not sold and with a lot of sewing magazines you get patterns sometimes so they sell these patterns for two dollars each um so i got some of those and i got some from op shops this one i got from an op shop actually it's a, a butterick um girls fashion essentials some old pattern and i was trying to make this one for my i think for my eldest daughter and i ended up with like a tunic type garment that fits me <laughs> and it looks okay now i think but the actual sort of skirt of it or the yes it's 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 not great but it's a sort of like an a-line tunic and i'm happy with the seaming and the work that i have done in the finishing except for yes at the the bottom of of the tunic skirt bit i don't know what it's called i don't know any any sewing terms or anything um but yes i um i remember i made it tried it on my i think she must have been 10 then tried it on her and it was just hilarious then i, I put it on myself and i thought oh this actually fits me and then i just took it off and put it away and it's just been sitting there and today i thought oh i'll try it on because i want to see how i can change the pattern i guess so what i did actually last night is that I made, I cut out the pieces, well not cut out, I traced and cut out the pieces for the um, one size down and I'm just going to think about the seam allowance and things to get a smaller garment. As you can see the sleeves are not um, big at all compared to the body of the garment but anyway I I did that yesterday and I actually cut out some fabric and did some of the sewing. So this is one that I have made in a smaller size and it's still quite wide. This is the size 8 to 10 I think they say. Um, so I did change the seam allowance a bit on the sides to make it not so wide. So I have made all the inside seaming and i need to do all the hemming on this one again this is some fabric that i got off the clearance shelf at spotlight it's a cotton jersey it's a very nice fabric i, I must say even though i go for the the fabrics that are inexpensive they are i only go for fabrics that are good quality um because i think it will just make the sewing much more um enjoyable uh, yes, so that's one that I have made. I did most of my sewing last night, actually. I just sort of got into the flow and kept going. Another item that I have used a lot um, this summer, actually, is a, a dress that I made. I don't know if it was last year or the summer before. And I wasn't, I was happy with it, but not happy enough that it was a dress that i would wear out in public <laughs> you know um, but this summer i have been wearing it going to the beach and it has been really really great because i like things that 
cover um, my, what is this, chest in the sun and I like things with sleeves. Uh, and for the beach it's nice with something loose fitting and I and in a cotton material and I find those things quite hard to find actually when you buy ready-made things so this is the dress that I, I made again in a nice cotton fabric um, good quality but I got it at a very good price it has sort of like a boat neck sleeves and then it has the here's the seam here and then it has the skirt. So it's a nice flowy thing. And the issue I had with it, I mean, first of all, all my finishing is not great, but also it's a little bit, it feels nice. It's nice and flowy, but it does look like it is a size too big. It doesn't look like it's meant to be nice and flowy. It just looks like it's a size too big. So my aim has been now the whole time to make it again and sort of tighten it up a little bit along the sides. Um, so I think I said last time that I had a, a dress cut out, ready to sew, and I just started sewing on it last night. Um, and this was a pattern that I got from the news agent. It's in the calls. And I think I've been making that one. So I have my pattern pieces and I used a fabric from my stash. And I have made all the inside seaming and I have all the finishing to do. And I did make it a bit tighter and it does have a nice tight fit. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Now I just need to make sure that I do all the finishing hemming nice so that I don't mess that up. So I can't I don't wear it <laughs> with other people. So it's exactly the same and I made it in a nice, um, I'm not sure if it's like a rayon cotton or if it's 100% cotton. It has that really nice drapey. Um, feeling to it, a bit of weight to it. So I've made that. And then, because the reason I haven't done all of the, the hemming is that I, I, I do all my sewing on my just basic sewing machine. And for the hemming, I use a twin needle. So it's just very, um, a basic uh, I don't do any, I don't even know what it's called because I don't know anything about sewing, but I just fold in the fabric and do a twin, a stitch with my twin needle on my machine. I don't know, I have one here and it's looking pretty bad. Oh, that's on the, yeah, one of those seams and it's, it's a bit fiddly and it's hard to get it to look nice but that's what I have to use so that's what I do so um before I thought I'll, I'll change to the twin needle and set it all up for that I thought I'll just do as much of the with the setup that I had with just a normal needle I'll do as much of that as I have time for and then I'll change it to the twin needle and do all the finishing so the third thing that I made was a t-shirt and it's the t-shirt that i wore last in my last video just a very basic t-shirt that actually i think my mum left me the pattern pieces for it when she was here one year and it's something i think she found in a magazine um it's just two pieces like this the pattern and you do you know put them against the fold so you get two full pieces that you sew together so I made this one and I didn't have enough fabric to make the sleeves or the little tiny sleeves the full length. So it'll be interesting to see how that ends up. So I made that as well. So it's just a seam here, a seam here and a seam each side. So I have all the hemming left to do. So I have now three garments that I can do all the twin needle hemming on. 
So I'll just change the setup on my sewing machine and um, have that as my next um, sewing to do. And all of this sewing, um, it's it's been great. I feel like it's so much fun. I enjoy um, finding fun fabric and making garments that I actually think are fun and comfortable and I can make them to fit me. And I'm still very much a beginner, very, very much a beginner. But I think after turning 40, <laughs> I, I just don't care as much anymore. I, I just go for it. I don't worry too much. Um, so, yes. So now I've been thinking about getting a, an overlocker machine, a, a serger. So I've been researching that. And the reason is partly because there's um, some sales on, but also partly because uh, my birthday is at the end of this month. And I thought, you know, you can, you can spend a lot of money on things just to have a present and just, you know, for something nice, but it's not something that's maybe really useful or maybe something that's just something, oh, what am I saying? Something that's not going to be very useful. It might be something that's, you know, pretty de decorative or it might be an experience or it might be, I don't know, um, facial treatment you know there's all these things that you can spend money on for someone who you think already has what they need and I thought well I might rather just put a bit of money into uh, an overlocker machine that I can feel is actually useful so I've been looking into what does an overlocker actually do that I can't do on my current sewing machine and you know what can you expect what are the price ranges and i've i've had the <laughs> i've had the okay um from um from the family to you know that this is what i can get for my birthday present so that's nice but i still want to make sure that it's actually um something worthwhile spending money on so if anyone out there have a an overlocker or know of an overlocker that they would recommend or if you just think that an overlocker is a waste of money please comment below and let me know this is all that is going on in my head at the moment is um overlocker research <laughs> um mm. so that's all my you know creative chaos at the moment it's sunday morning here and um i can't believe it's back to work tomorrow i had a really good making creative day yesterday and um, with my sewing and spinning uh, it was really nice after full work week quite busy so that was lovely today i have to actually get a bit of other stuff done um, yes with Rosie Island and my hand dyeing there's not a whole lot happening I have been focusing on the clubs and the clubs the February shipment is ready the yarn is all ready but I'm waiting for something to arrive in the mail that I want to include in the boxes this month so that's a little bit on hold hopefully the i will get the delivery soon otherwise i'll just have to rethink and get the boxes out anyway before the end of the month uh, i did when i did the dyeing for the, the club i did dye up some more of the bio sock so i do have two new colorways of the bio sock but i have not yet listed them in the shop hi everyone well what happened there Turns out my phone is having some issues, so the video that I record this morning got cut off before I had said goodbye. <laughs> so here I am, it's about 5pm in the afternoon, it's still Sunday, 
and I was sitting inside with a cup of tea doing the editing of the video and realized that the case was that there was no end to the video. So I thought um, before it gets darker, before we're back to another work week, I'll just do a quick little ending to the video for February. So I've, I've, it's a bit cooler, so I'm into my cozy home jumper. Uh, here's up, I've been in the pool, so my face is not quite the same, but hopefully it's all okay. And really, I just wanted to come back to say um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my subscribers, people that give me a thumbs up and all the comments and feedback that I get. I so appreciate it. And um, as you hear me say through my videos, I do have quite a bit on at the moment. But honestly, making my videos um, is something that I don't want to stop doing no matter how busy I get. So I'm hoping to be able to um, keep on doing a video a month or so. That will be fabulous. I think it's a really good way to um, connect with um, you out there, my, my friends. <laughs> so anyway... So that I can get the video finished and upload it to YouTube. I just wanted to record this little bit to put it at the end. So thank you everyone and um, take care, stay safe and I will see you next time. So take care everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye.